Hi, and welcome back to another episode of the History of Fan Anime. I'm your host, William Chow, and in today's episode, I'm going to cover the topic of uh, one of the topics of how we communicated with each other um, in the era uh, before Windows and, of course, you know, before the internet as we know it. And one of those ways that we used to communicate is using the BBS, okay? So, first of all, a lot of people ask, well, what the hell is a BBS? Okay, well, is that the same as like a, a BBF or is a BFF or is that something like that? No, no, no. BBS stands for a bulletin board system, okay? And the closest equivalent that we have, um, you know, in the internet that we, uh, modern internet, would be something like a, a Reddit or, a, you know, a forums, okay, a PHP forum or uh, something like, uh, you know, 2chan, 4chan, 8chan, that kind of idea. Um, basically a messaging type system, all right? But in this, uh, you know, pre-Windows sort of era, we had what they refer to as these, you know, text-based um, bulletin board systems, okay? And uh, people would basically dial up, uh, you know, different telephone numbers um, in your particular city and in your particular area to basically access these bulletin board systems. And these bulletin board systems are run on everything from like an Apple II computer or a Macintosh or, you know, a lot of times a basic uh, 286 or 386 processor, um, you know, a PC type computer uh, could definitely, you know, run a bulletin board operating software. And um, a lot of times um, they would be hooked up to a personal modem and then this modem would be hooked up to a, a standard telephone landline. And then basically this allowed people to basically phone into this, you know, to this computer. The computer modem would pick up and then basically patch uh, the data to, um, a, to the computer. Much the same way as, as, as we used to use faxes, okay? Um, so uh, I, with the help of a, uh, a friend of mine named Bill Jang, um, he uh, basically helped me put together what we refer to as the prototype generation BBS. Okay, we ran the thing, you know, basically, in, you know, in the you know bottom corner or basement of my uh, 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 my house here, and we just basically um, allowed, uh, you know, basically, you know, anime fans and that stuff to basically phone in and basically, uh, you know, access, uh, you know, messages about anime. Okay, now. Bill is really, uh, you know, good at uh, doing um, networking and computer stuff. He not only, um, you know, um, managed to uh, basically sign up for what they refer to as the um, bulletin board or SysOp um, uh, support uh, program uh, with uh, USR Robotics. One of the, uh, you know, more premier modems at this time was the uh, USR Robotics, uh, you know, basically the class of modems. And basically, uh, they had offered uh, this, uh, you know, basically um, BBS system uh, promo program where if you ran a bulletin board system, uh, you know, you can get, uh, you know, a, a really discounted deal on these USR robotics modems that they had. And, um, you know, I think when uh, we first started uh, the prototype generation BBS, we, you know, started at uh, 28.8K. Uh, BOD modem with a VIS um, an error correction and I think uh, by the time we finally finished doing the BBS system we were, we were upgraded up to a 33.6k uh, um, BOD modem uh, for the USR, uh, USR robotics uh, you know class of modems okay um, the other thing that Bill did really constructively well is he hooked up um, the bulletin board system to other bulletin board systems and uh, amongst also that he also hooked up to this uh, thing called FidoNet. Now the way that uh, bulletin board systems in this time worked is because since everyone's calling your particular computer uh, and basically interacting messages and that kind of stuff, um, in order to get those messages over to another computer you basically the computer had the phone up the other computer and then basically upload all the new messages that was posted on your board uh, up to that computer and then at the same time that computer could upload any of the new messages and replies and emails and that kind of stuff um, from that computer 
back to yours, okay? So then that way, uh, you know, they get new messages from you and then you can pull new messages from them. And then the, 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 the boards, uh, each individual bulletin board can be, um, um, you know, customized. Uh, whether or not uh, you know, they, they, they take messages from one board to another board, um, as well as uh, you know, download new content. Okay, um, so you know, our bulletin board system, the Prototype Generation BBS, was hooked up to a, b a bunch of other computer-related um, uh, bulletin board uh, you know systems uh, within Vancouver. But one of the big things that he managed to do is he managed to hook up um, the, the Prototype Generation BBS to FidoNet. So at this time, FidoNet was one of the largest sort of, um, you know, bulletin board systems that ran all over Canada and all over the United States. And they basically um, worked off of passing messages from bulletin board system to bulletin board system to bulletin board system. So that, you know, we could dump our messages to the Vancouver hub, and then the Vancouver hub could dump messages to like Seattle. And then of course, anyone who connected to Seattle could, could then, you know, aspire to the, 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 you know, the information out. So basically it was a, you know, a primitive version of how the internet works, you know, today. But, um, you know, again, we had to make telephone calls from one computer to the next computer. And we basically, um, you know, piggybacked off of, uh, you know, other people's computers and other people's you know, networks to spread our messages around. And at the same time, we also got a lot of messages from, you know, out of Vancouver into um, Vancouver and then, of course, into, uh, you know, my, my bulletin board system from calling the main hub. OK, um, one of the main, um, uh, you know, improvements that recently happened, uh, uh, you know, during this time was the ability to hook FidoNet messages and, uh, you know, make use of the Internet, you know, the RAA feeds. OK, um, this was done um, uh, by Bill by um, hooking up to this, uh, this basically server system called um, whimsy.quester.bc.ca. And that was, when, when, that was when, when I first got my first sort of email address uh, from the Internet. And that basically allowed me to, to answer questions and send messages out to people who had, you know, Internet email addresses. So, for example, if uh, someone was, uh, you know, at um, uh, let's say uh, you know the Berkeley University, um, they I could actually use the uh, the Quester.org system to send an email uh, to you know whoever at uh, Berkeley. Uh, you know um, edu for example, um, and so that basically opened up a lot of communication in there. But it all began with uh, you know just starting up a simple bulletin board system uh, for that. Again, you know. We probably only had, you know, several hundred users uh, on this bulletin board system, but the bulletin board system was, you know, was actively busy, uh, you know, large, you know, proportions of the day, you know, there probably, you know, there's very, very few times uh, and very, very few slots that the bulletin board system was actually open uh, where, you know, there was like nobody online, um, you know, to, 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 that was called in, uh, you know, to basically you know, look at their messages, you know, add and make responses and check their emails and that kind of stuff. Um, because I know that, uh, you know, the bulletin board system always was looking for an empty spot where they was uploading, um, you know, new messages and pulling down new messages. Okay. So that was sort of how the system worked. And that's uh, one of the ways how we uh, basically, cost, uh, you know, basically trade information and got information. Now, one of the things that, uh, you know, the, you know, the, the, the modern era, uh, will have problems fathoming is that even with this sort of system and what that we've set up and even with this dial up into this thing was extremely, extremely slow. I mean, for, you know, text and letters and, and, and information that, that, you know, like, uh, just messages and that kind of stuff, it worked pretty fine. It was pretty quick, but any sort of data transfer, like even like a simple picture was very difficult. And I'll illustrate that with, with one example, okay? I mean, everyone nowadays is you know, quite familiar with using, you know, for example, a, you know, a cell phone, um, like this iPhone 8 here, and you, you know, you take a picture with it, and you immediately, you know, post it up to Instagram, or, in, you know, and basically, uh, you know, email it to somebody, and, it's, you know, just virtually quick, zip, zip, and, you know, the person can have a message or an email on that, on their phone, pretty much instantaneously, Okay. But in this in this era of bulletin board system, okay, a standard picture, okay, that you would take on, let's say, an iPhone 8, uh, like this iPhone 8 here, would be like you know, let's say six uh, megabytes, okay. Now, 
to transfer this six megabyte picture uh, on this bulletin board system, if you're gonna try to upload it uh, onto the system here, okay? This modem was extremely slow, okay? Even at 2800 baud, that basically means that you uh, are uploading at basically about 3.418 kilobytes per second, okay? So to use this as an example for this picture that I just took on this iPhone here, um, it would take about 2,000 seconds to upload a standard photograph uh, from an iPhone to the bulletin board system uh, at this particular speed using this modem, okay? And that's about 33 minutes, uh, 33 and a half minutes, okay, basically, to take the simple picture that you just took to, you know, on your phone to put it onto the BBS, okay? And then, after you've done that, of course, you know, the, the picture would be the, you know, available for people to, to download. So then anyone who called up um, who wanted to look at that picture or wanted to download that picture, they would have to spend 33 and a half minutes downloading that picture to their computer before they can actually use and load it up and look at what the picture is about, okay? So that gives you an idea of just how slow, um, you know, this communication device was at this time, okay? And again, this is, you know, again, the era of, you know, 286s, 386s. We're talking about an era before Windows 95, even probably, you know, before Windows 3.1, okay? So this is what we had to use to work with, you know, in the era of, you know, the Apple IIe computers, the Mac, you know, the beginning of the Macintosh computers, and basically the era of the uh, pre-Pentium 1 class computers, okay? So, you know, it was tough, but we, we still got by, all right? <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> so, uh, what you want to do right now is go down below, you hit, uh, like and subscribe, and we're going to get some uh, more stories about how uh, things are uh, back in the days of uh, early anime, and um, some different topics of, uh, you know, some more definitions of some uh, other terms that came in from anime. Uh, I'll do that in the next couple episodes, so you want to subscribe and get to those, and so you get the notifications when I put those new episodes out, all right? So, until next time. See you again.